All right, welcome back everyone. And I'm going to hand it over to Avril Wiseman here at the partnership to get us started today. Avril. Thank you, Cashin. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining us at this SafeLink webinar hosted by uh, SafeLink and by Community Action Partnership. Um, and this will be a, a, a brief webinar that will show you what the SafeLink program is, why it's so important, and why we've had a, a good partnership with SafeLink for the past several years. Um, I am going to introduce Joy Burwell, who will be leading the webinar and uh, also answering questions. Um, and we've worked with Joy and SafeLink, as I said, for quite a few years and uh, found it to be a ve very beneficial program to our network. So thank you for joining us. And uh, please follow Cashin's instructions if there are any questions or technical difficulties. And um, Joy, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Avril and Cash, and I really appreciate um, all the support you all have given to not only help uh, SafeLink uh, have a great partnership with you all, but also on this webinar, which I'm a little <laughs> worried that this will be recorded and everyone will then again have to listen to my voice. But um, nevertheless, uh, thanks everyone for hopping on the call today, or this webinar today. Um, I'm sure I have interacted with some of you either through email, um, a conference, or a previous webinar. Um, or maybe you even called the customer service uh, for agencies when well, I had your number and we've connected on the phone. Um, but yes, as Avril said, uh, SafeLink has had a partnership with um, the Community Action Partnership since about 2010. Um, so we've been working um, hand in hand to get the word out about SafeLink to all the community action agencies across the country so that you all um, can offer the great um, and free service to your um, eligible uh, clients. So with that, I'm going to get started and do a quick overview of SafeLink as well, some of the updates um, that have happened recently and some of the activities we have going on. And then um, most of all out quite a bit of time for questions um, so we can have that at the end. So uh, just a quick overview of what SafeLink is. SafeLink is part of the uh, Federal Lifeline Program, which is a government-supported uh, program that provides eligible individuals a free phone um, and free monthly airtime uh, for a year. Um, SafeLink is administered as parent company in TrackPhone Wireless, which you may have heard of. It's the largest prepaid wireless company um, in the United States. Uh, and in order to participate, individuals must be eligible, either qualify based on enrollment in another social security program, or uh, they can qualify based on income. It is, the requirements are set by each state, so it does vary, but there are some uh, programs and income across the board that we can talk about later. Uh, contrary to recent uh, media, it did begin in 1985 under the Reagan administration. Um, it's not the Obama phone. It is was started long before that um, under the chairmanship of the FCC in 1985. It was originally um, a reduction on an individual's landline, but in 2008 under the Bush administration, the FCC uh, brought the Lifeline program into the 21st century by allowing it to become a wireless uh, benefit. Uh, it's not funded by tax dollars. Uh, contributions are given into what's called the Universal Service Fund, and uh, eligible telecommunication carriers who provide the Lifeline service then pull out of that fund to be able to provide the program. Um, in some cases, the telecommunications companies uh, do pass the cost along to their customers. So sometimes you'll see a, a extra little fee on your uh, cell phone bills or landline bills, but it is not a tax-funded uh, program. Um, so it does not have a, it's not a line item into budget is a good way of putting it. Uh, the FCC uh, approved TrackPhone in 2008 to provide lifeline service. Um, we are one of, the, if not the biggest lifeline service wireless provider and one of the first to provide wireless lifeline. So uh, how do you qualify uh, for SafeLink? Um, here are some program eligibilities, uh, programs you can qualify under. So if, for example, an individual is receiving a Medicaid, um, they would automatically be eligible for SafeLink. Uh, Low-income housing, um, TANF, uh, supplemental security income, 
SNAP, Section 8 housing, those are generally across the board in most states, automatic qualifiers, and the individual will just need to be able to prove that they're already receiving um, that type of social service support. You can also qualify um, based on income. As typically, in each state, it's at or below 135% of the federal poverty line, um, but again, it does vary by each state, um, and it's easy to check the state. Uh, certain eligibility requirements either online at SafeLink or on the application is pretty uh, standard and to show what programs you can qualify based on or the income. So we make it as simple as possible for both you to help your clients enroll as well as the individuals themselves. We want the application process to be easy and seamless. So um, the next question to talk about is what SafeLink provides the um, client. It provides them a brand new cell phone. It's not refurbished. Um, these are late model phones. They're not, you know, smartphones, but they do. They aren't refurbished. They do. A, they are text messaging capable, etc. Um, and they will get air time each month for up to a year, and then they're eligible to requalify after that initial year if they're still eligible. Um, and there are three plans that uh, clients can choose from. Um, by far, the 250-minute plan is the most popular, but um, there are other plans with different features. Um, and text messaging, as you will see, and this is one of our newer features, is unlimited, so individuals can text and it won't um, eat into their minutes, um, so they can still have the 250 uh, talk minutes if they so choose to do that plan. Uh, we aren't quite yet available in all 50 states. Um, on, to be approved in each state, you have to go through the state's Public Utility Commission. Um, so track phone has to actively petition and become a carrier in that state. Um, so these are the states we're currently in, uh, and the states that have asterisks by them indicate that there is a database verification available, meaning that uh, the individual may, depending on how they're, what program they're using as their qualifier, may not have to go provide proof that they're in that, that we can check on the back end through access to certain databases if they are already indeed enrolled in a program. Um, we are in most states, um, as you can see, as well as District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. Um, if we're not in your state, I encourage you to contact your state public utility commission and see about getting um, SafeLink in your state. Just a couple of additional points about the program. Um, as I said, you do qualify initially for a year, and then after that year, individuals can qualify again for an additional year if they're eligible. Um, they will get text message reminders sent directly to their phone, letting them know that it's time to renew or re-up for the next year. Um, you all do not get, uh, you all being the agencies will not get contacted. We do only contact the customer directly um, to renew. Uh, they can get their, uh, there's a one-year warranty, so if it's replaced, they can get it replaced if it's lost or stolen. And then if for after that year the, the service are no longer eligible, they can uh, keep the phone, of course, and um, purchase minutes and be a track phone customer. The application, as I mentioned at the top, uh, is very simple and there are multiple ways you can apply. You can apply by mailing or faxing in a paper application um, that we provide all of our partners so all the community action agencies can get uh, applications as well as other marketing materials for free. Um, you can apply over the phone at 1-800-SAFE-LINK um, or online at safelink.com. Um, so getting into the application process a little bit, and I should back up and talk a little bit about the fact that uh, since we've been working with the Community Action Partnership, we have uh, the process and the ability in place to track the enrollments of community action agencies um, so we can then compensate you all for successful enrollments to offset some of the staff time and resources it takes to help enroll folks in the service. So how we do that is we've, we've assigned each uh, community action agency a unique promo code. Um, that unique promo code comes with that on the application pre-printed, so you don't have to do anything. But when you're applying online, we want to make sure uh, you or the individual applying, um, when prompted, enters your promo code so you can be compensated for that enrollment. Um, so online, uh, applicants will be prompted to upload their proof of eligibility. Um, proof of eligibility is, depends on the program, and it's outlined for you on the application or online. 
um, but it's a, a photocopy of their stamp card or their Medicaid card, et cetera. We do encourage that the proof shouldn't be ripped or torn. It needs to be um, legible so that we can easily process the proof quickly and not have to deny it and then force you all or the individual to um, get another form of proof up. Uh, you can, um, after you apply on the paper application, if you don't want to mail in your proof, you can send in it in through uh, email, fax, or even take a picture of it and message it in that way. Um, and as I've also mentioned, that database verification in some states. So in some states, we have access to a Medicaid database where if your client were to say, I'm qualifying based um, on my enrollment in a Medicaid program, they don't have to submit their Medicaid card, but instead we can uh, check that on our end and process the enrollment without them having to provide that proof. Um, it's not available in every state. Uh, we certainly are working to get more of these databases set up so that we can take the onus off of you and the client. But again, since this is a federally supported program, um, this is a rule they have in place to reduce the fraud and abuse of the program. Uh, a couple more bits of information on enrollment, um, because again, it is a federally supported program. Technically, there can only be one um, enroll, lifeline enrollment per household. So if someone else is already receiving um, the landline lifeline reduction or another wireless lifeline program, they're going to need to unenroll from that program before they could enroll in SafeLink. Um, there is a stipulation that it's, you, if, you, if you're two separate economic units, meaning it's two different, you know, two, two roommates living together, you can both receive the phone. Um, you just have to fill out what is called the Federal USAC form. And again, when you're applying, it'll ask you some questions. And if it, if it seems like you're one of the folks that might be living in a situation where you're in a unit where someone else already has the lifeline program, but you are a separate economic unit, it'll then prompt you to fill out the USAC form and submit that so that you can both um, receive the lifeline program. Uh, the applicant must have a valid U.S. postal address. We cannot ship the phones uh, to P.O. boxes, so that's important to remember. And just the information, um, just so you all get a sense of it before you start enrolling clients, what is required is the name of the applicant, the address, their actual address, their date of birth, and the last form of the Social Security number, as well as that documentation proof um, if you're in a state where that is needed. And um, these are some other materials you all can uh, use and uh, order from us free of charge to help uh, you all promote the program in your office. Uh, we have display cases, posters, uh, applications, et cetera, that you could put out um, so people could be you know, reminded to ask you if they're eligible for SafeLink or just pick up an application uh, and fill it out themselves. Um, and so here we get into talk a little bit more about what the benefits of SafeLink is. So obviously I think it's pretty clear what the benefits of it are for your client. Uh, they get a free phone, a free monthly service, including unlimited text messaging. I do want to uh, reiterate or state that there are absolutely no contracts, no bills, or no credit checks. We're not trying to um, one-up or upsell anyone. They're not going to ever get a bill. Um, they can purchase additional minutes should they go over their allotted minutes in the month because um, as it turns out, as it works out, the phone is only able to call out for 911 after they've gone over their minutes. Um, but if they want to purchase additional minutes, they can go to any track phone retailer or online and purchase them at a subsidized rate as a SafeLink customer. But again, they would have to take that action. We're not going to give them minutes and then send them something saying they owe money. Um, so I, the free program really is free for them. I just want to make sure that everyone understands that. Uh, what, what they often, we, we found that uh, SafeLink customers do with their phones is it provides them access to 911. Uh, they can call and communicate with their health care providers, obviously connect with friends and family. But it really is a tool for them to uh, seek and retain employment as it gives them a way to connect with future employers or their employers. And then what we've heard from you all and other uh, social service agency partners is that it really provides you a mechanism to connect and follow up with your clients. Um, some of them may or may not have had a phone in the past. Well, now they do, and you can reach them to check, it, check up or send them appointment reminders via text message, et cetera. Um, there's also, as I will speak to in a second, the potential for you all to earn um, some money with uh, your enrollments and SafeLink. So uh, we've recently really ramped up the commission structure for community action agencies. 
Uh, it used to be a much lower amount on a different scale, but we've uh, since moved to a monthly scale. Uh, and if you were to enroll anywhere from one to 30 uh, applicants and their application was to be successfully approved, you would receive $10 per application for that month. So if you did three applicants that month, you would get $30. Um, anything over 30, any application, successful applications over 31 uh, goes up quite a bit to $20 per application. Um, and we've had this monthly structure with this commission structure in place for uh, since January of 2015. So you may have seen um, the email announcement about that and then follow up communications. Uh, and we have quite a few community action agencies who are earning um, quite a bit of money uh, each month by doing safe link enrollments, and just incorporating it in their other uh, social service intake structure and getting their clients set up with a phone. And then I also wanted to briefly highlight uh, something else we're looking that we just started and you hopefully received the email. Um, and if not, here's the information. We'll definitely can follow up um, after this with information. But we've uh, implemented a contest. This is just for our community action agency partners. Um, so the community action agency with the highest number of approved safe rink enrollments, enrollments between January um, 1 and September 30th, so essentially, essentially Q3, will win a tablet. Um, and then each month, we're also going to give uh, gift cards to the highest, uh, the three highest community action agencies um, with SafeLink approvals. Um, and there, I just want to remind you that they're based on a monthly enrollment um, using your agency's assigned promo code. Uh, we will most likely be doing a contest during Q4, um, which will be run um, October, November, December. Um, but the first uh, one is Q3. So just kind of. Um, a, a, a way to kind of encourage and drive some more enrollments, but also to, again, benefit you all uh, with something, since I know, since we know here at SafeLink that it's um, an extra step for you all and it's, it, you, need to, you can be compensated for the, the time it takes to enroll folks in the program. So um, hoping that you all enjoy that um, and find that as another additional benefit of the SafeLink program. Um, and this is the last slide before I move to questions, um, and I, we can answer the questions after the, I see a couple are coming in. Um, but these up on the screen now, and I'll leave them up there, but again, I see a question about will the slides be available, and I can certainly um, work with Avril and Cashin to make them available for you. But we have a dedicated support line um, for customers, uh, for social service agencies, like any community action agency can call this number. Um, and You'll either get me or my colleague, Jose, directly. Um, and if you don't get us, you leave a message and we'll get back to you. Um, but that number gives you to, gets you to us and we can answer any questions, concerns, or do you more applications, et cetera. You can also email um, that info at SafeLink Agencies. And again, that comes to me or my colleague and um, we will get back to you with whatever information you may need. Um, that these numbers and emails are not for clients um, I, or for customers. I don't have the ability to check uh, customer situations um, or their enrollments. So that is when I encourage you all to have them call the 1-800-SAFE-LINK or the technical support number. Uh, they can also go online. Um, if they capture their enrollment ID during the application process, that will allow them to uh, log in essentially online to safelink.com and uh, check their application status, check the, change their plan structure, et cetera. Um, so there's just the two different buckets. The social service agency numbers is for you all, community action agency staff. The customer service line should, should be called to, if a customer has an issue, if they've broken or lost their phone, um, that would be the number to call. So with that, let me um, start with some of these questions uh, below. Um, well, there's just one about the slides. And then the next one, what documentation does SafeLink need if a client receives LIHEAP? Um, I believe it's their, their enrollment letter, et cetera, but um, they will, they, you can check that online. If you continue to have questions with, about that, and I see you say it, that, um, I'm sorry, I could read your name, Linda. Linda, if you uh, have told 
uh, if you hear differently, you can certainly reach out to me via email and I can look into if there's some issue um, depending on what state you're in um, to make sure that we get that documentation correct so that your clients can be uh, successfully enrolled. Um, next question from Renee. We serve a large homeless population who are eligible for free um, PO boxes. Um, again, unfortunately, we don't um, deliver to uh, PO boxes. In some cases, um, if you can use your agency address and then fill out USAC forms, that may work. I don't know for sure. If you have homeless shelters, um, you can use the homeless shelter address and then fill out the USAC form for each of those uh, individuals and they can receive the phone to your homeless shelter and then, um, then other people in the shelter can still apply for the phone. Um, so those are all the questions I see in the chat box right now, uh, but I will keep talking for a minute until um, anyone else has a question. But uh, my colleague Nadia and I, um, who I believe is on the attendee line, um, is will both be at the Community Action Convention um, here in a little more than a month out in San Francisco. Um, and we will be there exhibiting. Um, we'll also have a uh, workshop session. So if you have any questions, uh, you should definitely stop by and chat with us. Um, if you, know, you certainly can reach out before then, but come by and say hi or ask any questions that come up between now and then. Um, so we're excited to be there. Uh, we've been to several of the other conventions and always enjoy um, just chatting and learning more about your clients you serve, the application process, et cetera, we always um, find that we get good feedback so that we can then make improvements uh, on our end. Um, we're always looking to make improvements on the SafeLink program. Um, so that is something. Uh, and, uh, oh, what do we need to provide as an agency to sign up? Um, well, the good news is that um, because of you, because of your relationship or your but the fact that you're a community action agency, chances are we already have you in our database. Um, so you would just need to shoot the info at safelinkagencies.com email, uh, email address and email saying, you know, am I already in there? If not, I would just need to take all your uh, contact information, upload it in our system. I could send you out um, a welcome kit, which will come with applications with your promo code pre-printed on them. And then you can, start enrolling clients. It's very simple, straightforward uh, application process for you. Um, and then on the compensation end, um, the partnership does need a W-9 from your agency to be able to issue the payment. So would encourage you once you've gotten approved to, or not approved, but once we've gotten you all set up on our and SafeLink end, to then email um, the partnership with your W-9. So, and I think that then would complete the process uh, for that. Um, I guess this is Avril Weisman again from the partnership. And I, di I did want to say that um, SafeLink is a, uh, a benefit for Community Action Partnership agency members uh, to the agency since the agencies participating do receive compensation. Um, and, you know, are eligible to, you know, to be a part of this. So if you're not sure if your community action agency is a member, you can contact the partnership or Saranda Watkins at the partnership, and, and that is S. Watkins, W-A-T-K-I-N-S, at communityactionpartnership.com if you're not sure if your agency is a current member. Well, I'm sure you all are, but just to check and make sure that you can be eligible to receive the compensation from SafeLink. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Apple. Um, I don't, I hate to hold everyone up, but I'm not seeing any additional questions come in. Um, but again, I really encourage you all, A, um, we've had, I, I would say that on average there are 400 or so community action agencies that are enrolling someone um, in their in their service area in SafeLink in any given month. Um, so certainly, if you're not if you you have questions and you're not sure how it would work from an agency perspective, I'd be happy to also connect you with someone near your area that might be using SafeLink. But uh, 
you know, we're, we, we've been working with the action agency since 2010. Uh, we really do find that it's a nice fit. Uh, the customer, majority of the clients you serve are eligible for the phone. Um, and even if they already have another phone, I mean, it's so if they can reduce their uh, bills by taking SafeLink and getting rid of that other phone, um, and Lord knows we could all do without one less bill. Um, so with that, I will let you know, let, let you all go. But again, please feel free to reach out to me um, via one of these, this phone number or info at SafeLink agencies. Um, you can also, if you have a question, um, you know, Avril and the partnership always uh, keep me in the loop and send me anything that they, I need to address um, from that end. Um, and James from the commission, hi James, nice to, nice to chat with you via chat. Um, he asked, how much is your highest producer getting each month in commissions. Um, I believe one of our highest producers is getting close to $2,000 a month. Um, so it really can be a source of income uh, if you all wanted it to be. Um, uh, typically, I think on average, most people get between 20 and 30, but we do have some folks that are quite up there, one of them being regularly in the you know, 1,700, 1700 to 2,000 uh, mark. Um, okay, so um, Avril, I don't know if you wanted to say anything else, but I really do appreciate everyone taking the time this afternoon to join. Uh, I look forward to hearing from many of you, um, getting you set up with SafeLink if you're not already, or answering and addressing any questions or concerns you may have if you are. Um, thank you again. Thank you, and uh, Nadia was working uh, behind the scenes for us, so the person that asked about uh, light heat proof earlier, uh, they can accept um, either the approval letter or a gas or electric bill showing name, a date no older than six to eight months, and a light heat discount clearly shown um, on that gas or electric bill. So uh, you do have a um, option other than the approval letter. So just wanted to add that in since we, we got that late breaking. Great. Thanks, Catherine, and thanks, everyone. All right. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you.